Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another spoiler free book for you to share with you guys. And today we are talking about The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic by Brienne Randall. So before we dive too deep into this spoiler, let me tell you right off the bat that I loved this book. I loved it. First of all, it caught me with the title. That's such, it's such a cute title. Second of all, in the description, it said Practical Magic meets Gilmore Girls. If you know anything about me, you know I love those two things very much. Um, now, having read it, do I think it's Practical Magic meets Gilmore Girls? It's definitely Practical Magic vibes. Um, family, magic, cozy, um, curses. So it definitely had it there. For a while as I was reading, I was like, meets Gilmore Girls? But the more it went on, I see where that was coming from. There's definitely a lot of quick and witty banter and the town they live in definitely resembles or has the same sort of vibes as Stars Hollow does. Um, so I get it, I get it. And yeah, I think I'd agree, but definitely, definitely the practical magic side. So, what is this book about? What indeed? So, um, like I said, there'll be no spoilers here, so you can relax, don't worry. Um, but our main character is a woman named Sadie. She's in her late 20s, I think she's 28. She's, um, she's having a bit of a rough time and has been having a bit of a rough time for a while. Her twin brother, who means the world to her, has um, disappeared has left. She, she knew he was going so it wasn't quite a disappearance but he left. She knew it was coming and but still she's been incredibly distraught ever since. She's living with her grandma, a woman she calls Gigi, um, who is getting up in age and um, you know that's a concern. Um, she runs a bakery um, a very sweet little bakery because a lot of Sadie's magic is sort of tied into baking. She puts her magic into the things she bakes. And one thing that's really cute is at the end of every chapter there's a recipe for something that was talked about in that chapter. And there are all kinds of recipes in here. There's hot chocolate, there's a couple of different teas, there's different cakes, um, there's a salve which is good for injuries. So many recipes and I am definitely, definitely going to be trying some of them. Um, so Sadie's got her bakery and as we learn a bit more about her, we learn that as with everyone in her family, um, she's got magic. Her brother did as well, but she never really knew much about her brother's magic. He was really tight-lipped about it and then took off. Um, now they had been raised by their grandmother their whole life, I think I mentioned, and their mom is out of the picture. And we don't quite know why that is, what happened at the beginning. We learn, of course, as time goes on. And we learn that the curse that has been bestowed upon Sadie is that she gets four heartbreaks. And once those four heartbreaks come, she will lose her magic entirely. So it's... She's stressed about that. She loves her magic. It's something that she feels makes her who she is. Sometimes you get the vibe, like a little a little too much so. Like she really puts her whole personality into this being her thing. And so far she's had two heartbreaks and as they're piling up, um, she's getting very irritated <laughs> that it keeps happening. The first heartbreak was with a man named Jake who she loved very much and who left. The second heartbreak came in the form of her brother who left. <laughs> and now it's got her very guarded. She's got her defense is up. She's not wanting to let anyone too close for fear of um, wasting another heartbreak on someone who doesn't deserve it, more or less, and getting one step closer to losing her magic. Um, from there, as time goes on, we just get to learn more about her and her grandma and their relationship. And then there's an incident that causes a lot of family members who have been gone to return. Um, not just including perhaps the most obvious, but also um, just aunts and uncles, cousins, things like that. Because there's, for the Revelaire magic, that's their surname, Revelaire, um, 
it says in the lore of the family that a reveler always leaves but then returns. Um, although Sadie is steadfast that she will be the exception to that rule, she's never leaving. Um, and then as the book goes on, it's just, it's a cozy, um, it's a cozy story. I loved every second of it. Um, I was a little worried that it might veer into a little more of the cheesy side, but it doesn't. And what really keeps it from doing that is that witty banter that is sort of Gilmore Girls-esque. It's a little more um, adult than... <laughs> was on the Gilmore Girls but it you know makes you think if the Gilmore Girls weren't on TV perhaps this is how they would talk it's a very natural sort of dialogue with um you know a little profanity here and there which I like it kept it it kept it more real for me and yeah like I said I loved the recipes that were included we'll definitely be trying some I feel like this is definitely going to be a series I don't see how it couldn't be it really ended on sort of a um, what's to come. I have a feeling that in one of the books to come, Sadie's going to realize that she is going to have to leave and then perhaps one day come back. Um, I don't think she'll be away long, but I feel like maybe that's going to happen in one of the books in the series. And I'm going to tell you, I don't, I don't read a ton of series, but I feel like this is one that I will definitely stick with and I can't wait to see what comes next for Sadie and Seth and Jake and the whole gang. Um, and the town was so sweet. I just loved all the supporting characters that we met along the way. I thought it was a real great, sweet story. And um, I don't have it with me here right now, but I'll put it down in the description box down below, the date that this comes out. I believe it comes out in September, but I'm doing it now because I saw, I got this book, thankfully, and um, I'm very appreciative from NetGalley, and I saw that it gets archived in July. Did that fly? <laughs> I see that it gets archived in July, so I wanted to do it now before the book got archived and I couldn't access it. Um, so I'm not sure why it gets archived so early. Normally they get archived around the time that they come out. Um, so I don't know what that is, but I wanted to make sure I got it read, got it reviewed, got it posted before all that happened. <laughs> so that's where we are now. Um, and yeah, I loved it. I think I'm gonna give it a five stars just because it was a feel good, cozy read. You know, it's it's not too serious, it's not too deep, but I thought it was, um, it was like a warm cup of tea, and I think a lot of you guys would like it too, if you like those. If you like stories that center on sort of, um, magic, but in like a magical realism sort of way, where it's just people sort of living their lives with magic, and like I said, a lot of the magic's in the food she makes and the teas she prepares for her loved ones and herself. I think that um, I love stories of kitchen witches who use those sort of things to channel their magic. I just think it's really sweet. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe. I would love to have you. We do book talks, we do book reviews, we do vlogs, we do reading vlogs. All kinds of fun bookish content. And I hope you guys are having a great day or night, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you guys again real soon. I think with another vlog will be next. But who knows? Who knows? <laughs> we go where the wind takes us. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you again real soon. Bye.